Whew, finished taking photos for the thumbnail. It's the last thing I need to do for this video. I think I'm gonna take a break and check my YouTube comments. Oh, here's one. Oh, Raigai? He will always get attacked. He is a toxic part of the Heroescape community. His constant negativity is like a cancer that spreads infecting others. Raigai was complaining when the original launch of AOA began in August of 2022. He was a big anti-advocate of the launch, stating it was overpriced which in time affected others not to buy. Wait, wait a minute, what's going on? Things not right. My channel's only existed for eight months. How could I have stopped the Hazlab campaign? Wait a minute. This can only mean one thing. It is I, Raigai, from the future. You must come with me if you want to not perish. What? No, I don't. I don't want to deal with this right now. You must come with me, or the future is in danger. Look, I've got a lot going on. I've got a video to publish. I don't want to have to use this, but I will. Alright, I'm tired of dealing with this. Maybe I am toxic. <laughs> Welcome to Raigai Plays Games, where I'm about to show you what it looks like when the man who toppled HasLab makes a run at an OHS title. This is Online Heroescape, the digital version of a great tabletop game with a revival in the works. This was OHS's 56th season, a double strike pod draft. The format is fairly similar to my last battle report video, the real one, not the short one. Everyone brings three small armies with a lower point and figure limit. They're combined into one pool and we draft two pods to build our armies. The catch this season was that both players got to strike. The player going second got to remove a pod from the pool and the player going first picked one pod, then the second player picked one. But before the second player picked their last pod, the first player got to remove another of the remaining pods, if they wanted. Now, if that sounds confusing, I understand. Let's look at an example for this first game against Doc. My three pods were a bunch of Maro Stingers, some Barcannon Squads, and Heracles, or the old Haggerty Special as a player has called it. Doc's three pods were Blade Gruts, Arrow Gruts, and Death Chasers, with heroes thrown in the mix. My smooth brain chose to not strike anything, so Doc took the stingers. I took the blade gruts and Ornak, and Doc struck Heracles, leaving the Varks open for me to take. Doc finished out his last pick with the arrow gruts. This game would set the tone for the opening season. A message of hope, of triumph, of overcoming the odds, and just kidding, I lost. Turns out stingers are really good when you can pawn them up on height right next to your start zone. Map problems aside, I learned a little bit more about the online HeroScape interface this game. I'll just go through the quick message menu and just start seeing what I uh, seeing what I want to what I want to send. <laughs> there you go. Press done, Doc. I, I think that one feels very. Uh, it's really aggressive. I don't think I've ever sent that one before. <laughs> Dude, it's, really, it's all red. It's all red. It's all caps. <laughs> Please press DONE after your turn action. Got it? Where's the quick message to say, Please make your order markers more obvious? Any of these other ones just so, like, insanely in your face? Double check your movement. Oh, just normal text. God, and it's all- it's- the other one's bold and italicized. I feel like whoever coded that in had like a good reason to put that in there. You know what I mean? Like the other ones, he's just like typing them in the the database. This, this is all done. And then he, I, he... I, 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 <laughs> I mean, he hasn't been on. Oh. Website oh, I see. Okay. I just feel like they played a game, and their opponent just would not finish their turns. I gotta add one last one. I'm so I'm so ticked off. Oh, Mega Silver. It's more for when you're not using voice. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah, and that's even better because then you can't tell the tone that your opponent is t is telling you that in. <laughs> you just see that ominous message pop up. 
on screen with no context. This wasn't a particularly close game, which I'm sure will make Doc very happy that it's memorialized in film. But that meant I needed to win my next three games to get to the playoffs, a very tall task. My next game was a little unusual. My opponent Swarm and I had just finished an OST game and were coincidentally paired for round two of OHS. So we both went into this game pretty fatigued and Swarm made the same mistake I did against Dog by not striking the stingers. I grabbed the stingers and Swarm took his Havoc Eradicators, a sturdy VC unit that has a high risk, high reward ranged option. I struck his Marden Hounds, he took the Varks and I finished with his McDurk Warriors and Alistair Pod. The story of this game was the worst luck I've ever seen with the Havoc Eradicators. After attacking from range with the Havoc, you have to roll the d20. If you roll a 6 or lower, the Havoc dies. Swarm's Havocs blew themselves up more than I've ever seen, failing 6 out of their 10 rolls and killing off most of them before I even got there. There was a potential swing when Alistair took 4 wounds in one attack from a remaining Havoc, but the Stingers were able to clear the Stragglers and the Varks without an issue. The next game was over fairly quick too. I ended up with my Stingers and my opponent's 10th, and my opponent had Heracles and a Death Chasers pod. After taking out Mibirxa and picking off approaching Chasers, the 10th retreated to let the Stingers take out Heracles. The beefy boy could only do so much, and we headed into the last round of the regular season with the playoffs at stake. My opponent won the dice off and elected to pick first, giving me an optional strike. Had I learned my lesson from the previous games against the Stingers? Would I be able to put the pieces together? No. See, it wasn't a mistake against Doc. It was a calculated risk. Unfortunately, I am bad at math. I did not take into account how good the map would be for Stingers in my first game. This time, I knew I had a better shot. There was Shadow on the map, which gave the Varkannon Dark Claws huge boosts. And while the VC Varkannon faction is notoriously difficult to play with, it's also very difficult to play into. I have a lot of experience with the Barks since they're some of my favorite BC designs to ever release. I felt confident that the Barks could overcome the Stingers and with my opponent's Havocs as backup we were ready to take on the Morrow Horde. Blade and Fang flashed across the battlefield as the Barks rocketed into combat. My opponent mixed order markers giving me pause about how far to push my fragile grey spears, but ultimately it gave me room to sit on the unique attack glyph and decimate the Stingers. The Crab and Rygarn gave their best, but three full squads of Havocs were more than enough to finish the game, even with a few self-inflicted explosions. That meant we were through to the playoffs, where we secured another good draft in the quarterfinals. The dynamics of my pod were paying off so far. The ol' Haggerty special has a little trick embedded into it, one that I've been quite successful with so far. Heracles is a dominant unit against large and huge figures. His stats into those sizes are 7 attack and 5 defense, and he gets to use the X order marker to take an extra turn, meaning he can rip apart Major Q9 before the Soul Board can even blink. Every Varkanon squad is large, giving Heracles those bonuses, but he's still a single attacking hero, he's got his limits, and I've seen the Varks take him down just as often as not, depending on who's piloting either side. Drafting Heracles isn't nearly the counter into those wolves it seems on paper, and depending on the opponent's pods, he can be at a major disadvantage in an endgame against small and medium squads. And that's exactly what happened this game. My opponent opted to take Heracles with his last pick to stop the Barks, and presumably Grimnak. But another shadow map meant that the Dark Claws were unstoppable, and by the time Heracles came out, I'd already churned through most of the stingers. Grimnak and the Heavies wandered over to the Wound Glyph and waited, and the buffed Orc Wall beat Heracles into submission. The set trap had sprung again. The semifinals against Shiftrex were unrecorded, but I drafted well and played well. It was a close game, but it got us through to the finals. And what a legendary matchup it was. We were facing Chris Perkins, Scapecon World Champion and top ranked OHS player. We had also each just won three of the six OST seasons, making this sort of an informal best of seven just in a different league. Chris Perkins won the dice off and chose to pick second, striking my Varks pod. I took the Stingers and Chris took his Nikitas and Cathar pod. Not wanting to get stuck with Heracles into all small or medium figures, I banned nothing. And Chris took a handful of Wormlings while I took the Swiftfangs and Kazuki. This was meant to be a battle for the ages. Complex armies and order markers, top minds competing against each other. I knew I needed to be at the top of my game, but as time progressed, I realized I was having difficulty rolling skulls. 
With panic rising in my chest, I realized that my very serious gamer injury was coming back to haunt me. To be fair, I did get another serious gamer injury today. Uh, I was playing with one of my cats and I scraped my finger on their tooth. Uh, it's not on my mouse hand, so I thought I could play through the injury, but that's clearly uh, affecting my performance here. That was a beautiful paragraph that you just spilled off, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. That's going in That's going in the super cut. At one point through the mid-game, I was rolling 40% attack dice. The margins at this level are so slim, and had I managed to kill one or two more Cathar Spearmen with my last few stingers, the game could have gone very differently. But it was not to be. The Kazuki made a last desperate attempt and, and got braced just real good. Just... <laughs> speared right through the chest. So ended my playoff run, making that my fourth final in just my 11th season, still without a title. But I'm not giving up. That OHS title is out there somewhere in the future. I just hope the timeline hasn't changed too much. Until next time, thanks for watching.